Uh, Director Ray, welcome. Um, before we get to the business of this hearing, we've got some, in fact, a lot of um, unfinished business. Um, do you know how many questions for the record the FBI failed to answer in the last four years? I do not. Well, I'll tell you. There were nine hearings in this committee in which the FBI was a, test, uh, a witness, and in seven of them, the committee got exactly zero questions for the record. Seven. Zero questions. Can you explain that? I cannot. Uh, I will say... Are you going to do any well, better with the questions that we're getting right now? You've been asked questions for the record. Are they going to go into the same whatever it was, hole, where questions for the record go to die at the FBI? Uh, well, Senator, first thing I would say about questions for the record uh, is that, as you may know, there is a, uh, an elaborate interagency process that requires that answers uh, that we provide have yeah, to Yeah, which is immensely provided. convenient for the executive branch. But our questions don't direct that interagency process, do they? And that interagency process doesn't respond to us in Congress, does it? We're required to comply with the interagency process to, to provide our responses to questions for the record. By now, what? having said that, having By said what that, are you required to comply with that interagency process? I, I can't cite you the, the reg or the rule. Because um, it seems to me that when the FBI wanted to get information to this committee, particularly when it wanted to get information to Republican members of this committee so they could investigate your investigation of the Trump-Russia connection. That information got right through to our Republican colleagues. It didn't, go, didn't seem to go through any interagency process. It wasn't delayed. What we seem to have is for most of us, but this was bipartisan, by the way, when I say we got zero questions for the record answered from those hearings, I mean zero questions of any member of this committee, not zero Democratic members answered, okay? So you've got this basic highway for responses to Congress. Let me ask you just a little sidebar. Do you think Congress deserves responses to questions from executive agencies as part of our oversight responsibility? Yes, absolutely. Okay, good. So we're at least over that hurdle. So we've run this rigmarole with the interagency process in which we don't get answers. Some of these go back to 2017, by the way. That's years of not getting our questions answered. And then, when it's a question that's suddenly of interest to one party and to President Trump, there seems to be a little side road that gets built around the traffic jam. And stuff just flies right through. So please don't tell me about interagency process when I've been sitting in this committee watching FBI inv information get straight to this committee without interagency process. What are we going to do about this? Is so, this a problem? So, Senator, let me say first, uh, as I said, that I absolutely agree with you that Congress needs answers to its questions. Uh, I am frustrated as well uh, at the process. Uh, I have added more staff, and my understanding is that when it comes to correspondence, for example, which just doesn't require the same interagency process, that we have significantly reduced the backlog and the turnaround time. But there's no question in my mind. We had no question in my mind. Eight letters go unanswered the oldest one dated March of 2017. So if you think your process is working, we're not seeing it on our end. Well, I will commit to you that I will do what I can to improve the process. I am uh, frustrated as you are, uh, and we have obviously we need to get better. Well, I will commit to you that I'm going to make sure that this gets done. And if it means stopping nominees, if it means doing whatever it takes to get through this problem, we're going to get through this problem. Because it is just plain wrong for the executive branch of government in a separation of powers country to refuse to answer questions of the elected representatives of the legislative branch. It's just wrong. And however many excuses and however much rigmarole the executive branch may set up to slow down those answers, I don't care. That's your executive branch rigmarole. That is not a legitimate 
answer to a legislator's question. And I got stuff that's now backed up for years. Now, the courts have said that they're not, they don't want to intervene in enforcing our subpoenas. I'm not sure we can get subpoenas in a 50-50 committee, but assume we could. The courts have said they don't want to enforce it. So you guys can put our subpoenas in the same file with our letters and our QFRs and not answer them. And then what happens is the courts have said, the way we resolve this is we've got to hit you legislatively. The court said you sh we should hold up appropriations for the FBI and for executive agencies that aren't responsive. That's our tool. Your people do good work, Director Ray. I don't think you want that to be our tool. But you can't be in a situation in which you don't answer our questions, you create rigmarole log jams, and when there's a political interest in getting information out to the committee, suddenly none of that rigmarole pertains. Suddenly, everybody gets their hands on all the information that they need just as soon as they need it. And by the way, I believe on a partisan basis, not shared with both sides of the committee. So before we get to clearing up whatever else we need to get cleared up, all the stuff that's backed up behind our questions, we got to get through the problem of why you're not answering our questions. And we've got to clear that up. And I don't know how we clear that up. I think we clear it up, Mr. Chairman, in a bipartisan fashion, because I think both sides should get this. But this business of years going by, of hearings in which zero QFRs get answered, and letters that get thrown off into the don't care, to, don't care to answer that one pile. Woodrow Wilson once said that the oversight function, the investigative function of Congress is often to be preferred even to its legislative function. We got to get that back. And I'm going to find a way with this committee and with you to clear the backlog. I don't think you think that I should give up on questions because I've been stonewalled for years. If I've asked them and they deserve answers, they should be answered. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. My time is up. We'll leave it at that. Mr. Chairman, if I just may add, with your indulgence, one point. Uh, Senator, I commit to working with you to try and see how we can improve our responsiveness uh, and to getting you more of the information you need. The one thing I will say is that I can assure you that in terms of my responsiveness to this committee, to the members of this committee, or to Congress overall, it is absolutely not, speaking only for myself now, on a partisan basis. Well, you run an organization that seems to have operated under very different rules, and it was you running that organization. So let's not make these distinctions right now. <laughs>